Welcome in. All right, so what happens at boundaries when waves are passing through from one medium to another? So that's what I wanna be able to introduce you to. So it's kind of the first step because when waves are passing along, they're not always being passed along in exactly the same medium. So for example, they might go through air, then they might hit water, okay? Or they might go through air and then they might hit some kind of an other solid, for example, etc. Now, we're gonna try to simplify this so that first, you hopefully are capable of understanding when waves are passing along or pulses are passing along from one boundary to another, just simply in kind of visual strings. So it's much easier for us to be able to think about what actually happens to the actual transmission of the wave and also what happens to the reflection. So the idea is I wanna be able to talk about free end reflections, fixed end reflections from having a light string to a heavy string and what happens to those reflections from having a heavy string to having a light string, which is attached, so that's the boundary in between from heavy to light, what happens to that reflection, and then just remind you that the amplitude changes in the transmission can indeed happen when you're going from one medium to another. All right, so let's dive in. So first off, free end reflections. Now, what does it mean to have a free end reflection? Well, so if you take, and again, I'm gonna just try to simplify this concept and try to show it to you, that if you had some medium, let's imagine that it was indeed a string. So that particular string, let's say, is starts at one point and it starts at another point. I'm gonna make this a little bit thicker, okay, so that it looks and pops up for us a little bit. Now, these particular ends, you know, you can imagine that this entire string is just lying on the floor and or it's not or simply just being kind of up in the air but it's just magically like a carpet and it stays along in that particular format and the starting point and the ending point are actually not attached they're not fixed so they can freely move up and down okay or any way that they like so these can just move up and down as they like they're not fixed or anchored in so now the question is what if we wanted to pass an actual pulse or a wave and then as it goes through? So, you know, what would happen as this is passing through and eventually it gets towards the end? So let's take a look, okay? So what would happen in this instance? So I have found, okay, so this is from physics.du.edu. I'll put the actual link so that you can do these simulations yourself as well. And they have done a great job on this. So I'm just using through their site. So this is the free end and passing through a wave. So when it goes through, so if I'm gonna play this, you notice that, all right, so we're creating a wave or we're creating a pulse and now it's passing along. So the energy is moving through and the particles are kind of going up and down as that energy is passing. Now it's going to get towards the end. Now, because that end is free to move, what do you think will happen as you're going along? Well, so if I go back into the wave and I try to kind of say this, that, you know, this is kind of coming towards the end here, notice that these are trying to pull this up. So that means this one should go up and it should get whipped upwards because it's not fixed. And it should carry on further because as the energy is coming in here, so these particles are gonna start to move up and these ones will follow and then these ones will follow. Now eventually it's gonna reach a particular peak because there's gonna be tension within the rope and there's also gravity of those particles which is trying to bring it down. And then when it gets to that peak, it should come back, okay? Now as it starts to come back, it's gonna pull the other ones, okay, downwards as well and you'll notice that there is an actual reflection that you're passing through. So let's see this. So I'm gonna play this now. Okay, all the way through, boom, it goes all the way and it now comes back. So as you're having through and notice it gets reflected. This is called the reflection because of the fact that the pulse came in, okay, bounce back and then it comes back. And when it's a free end, it actually comes back exactly the same way. So if it's inverted coming in, my apology, if it's upright coming in, then it returns upright because of the fact that it gets to go up as a free end and then it gets to come back. So that's something that you will notice that you will see. 
And this is really neat. Now I can replay this again and notice. So think about those particles being now pushed upwards. And so the free end will get pushed upwards. Okay, it's pushed upwards, boom, gravity and tension pulls it back down. And then the wave okay, returns back. That is a free end example. Now, what would happen if we wanted to fix that end? So we would anchor it in so that it couldn't move at all. So when that wave would be coming in, you know, and the particles are now moving back up, well, if it's fixed, it's not going to be able to move back up. So therefore, it's going to create a tension very quickly that these particles, which are trying to pull it back up, they can't. And therefore, that anchor, okay, that fixed end is going to try to pull those particles back down. So let's see what happens in a fixed end when that end is actually fixed and you whip that string and this will now come all the way close. I'm going to just pause it before. And now if I step this one by one, it's going to try again to whip this upwards like it was a free end, but it can't because it's fixed. So notice it freezes the particles, okay, because of the fact that they can't move. So now this one can't move. So it passes on and blocks the other one to move, the other one to move, and it just fix them back up. But of course, this is going to get to a certain point where now that tension is so strong that it's going to start to pull this, okay, pull the other ones back down very quickly. So notice this is happening kind of right now. This is as far as it can go. And now that tension from the fixed end whips this and it creates energy back down and it transfers that energy in. And now notice that it passes it all the way down because of a, like a whipping because of that fixed end. Now it will get to the bottom and now notice that the particles on the left hand side, now they're getting pulled back down. And that is the transmission or the reflection of the actual wave. So now those, that wave or that pulse gets now carried back, but it is inverted now. So it came in upright and now it is inverted and comes kind of inverted back down. So this time it's out of phase. When it was a free end and it was able to move up, it was in phase and it gets reflected in exactly the same direction as it came in. If it's a fixed end, the opposite happens. And this is a very nice simulation to be able to see that. Now, the next set that I wanted to be able to discuss is what happens when instead of having boundaries either fixed or, okay, they are free to move as they like. Now, what happens if you have boundaries where it actually passes on from one medium to a different medium? So if I take this, I'm going to shrink this up a little bit, okay, in here, and I'm going to change the style and make it a little bit smaller. Now, I'm going to draw out and let's imagine that there was a different medium in here. And first, okay, I'm going to make this medium, okay, much heavier, okay, so much harder to move. So you can imagine that now we're going to have an actual wave or a pulse coming in here. And now it's going to hit this boundary right there. And now the question is, what is it going to do as it passes along? Now it has energy, so it should pass some of that energy forward. But will any of the energy will also get reflected. Now, when this one is heavier and this one is lighter, we kind of know what happens to the speed of those waves, in particular when it's a string. So if you recall, so in a string, the speed is equivalent to the square root of the tension in the string, but that tension is divided by the actual linear density. Now, I'll put up a link up above there if you've forgotten about this. So what this tells us is that the bigger the linear density, so if this gets bigger, if this increases, your speed, because this is in the denominator, your speed will actually decrease. So the heavier it is, okay, the speed, okay, will slow down. The lighter it is, so the smaller this is, okay, so if this goes down, this one will go up. Now, it's a square root of it, so it's not exactly kind of one to one in terms of an inverse proportion, but it is still an inverse square root proportion within here. So this one, if it's lighter, it's going to be moving faster. Okay. This one is going to be moving slower if it's 
heavier, okay, if it is indeed strings. Now, you have to be careful with those boundaries and those conditions when it's not strings, okay, so when it's something else, because then there's a lot of other items that play a role. The elasticity, okay, of it, okay, so that you have, of course, the density plays a role, there's temperatures and so on, but within strings, this is very nice to be able to capture. So our question now is, if you do have a light to a heavy, okay, what happens to the reflection? Is it going to be kind of like a free end reflection where the actual energy, okay, through the wave or the pulse comes in and then it gets reflected back and it looks exactly the same? So meaning that it's still upright if it comes in upright. Now we know that some of that energy is going to get passed along. So this wave is going to carry through but how much of it is going to carry through, okay, and in which direction. Let's take a look. So this is really cool to be able to see. So this is light to heavy now. Let's play this. Let's create a pulse. So this now creates a pulse, hits this, boom. Notice that the heavier, okay, and now it comes back, but it comes back inverted. Now, is this surprising? I hope not. Why? Think back of what happened to a fixed end. In a fixed end, okay, it came back inverted because that last particle was fixed and it couldn't go up. So the tension very quickly, okay, slowed these things down and then whipped them back. And in a, if on the right hand side, the blue one is indeed heavier, the light one is going to have a hard time to try to whip this back up. And that's exactly what has happened. So if we restart this back in here, so notice, and I'm going to just pause it before. So here, it wants to now whip the heavier one upwards, but because it's heavier, so if it's the linear density is much more, then what's going to happen is it's going to act kind of like a fixed end where it's like, oh, I'm trying to pull it, but this thing is super heavy. So it's now slowing me down, okay, and pulling me back down. Now it's moving it upwards, so it's not like a fixed end, but Okay, it gets whipped back down. And now the wave carries through, so it continues on in the heavier one in exactly the same. So it was upright, so it continues upright, but the reflection is inverted. So that's what you have it. So it would be out of phase there, okay? And this one actually carries through. And notice, okay, if I play this along, the light one just finishes and this one slowly moves along. So now for the last one, which is the heavy to the light, well, this shouldn't now surprise you. The heavy is going to have an easy time to lift up the light. And if that happens, then it should act like a free end. So that transmission at the boundary should basically now get, yes, it might get reflected back. Some of the energy will get pulled in to the right-hand side on the right one, and they both should be in exactly the same upright position because of the fact that the heavy one now is going to pull the light one very easily upwards okay because it's a lot lighter so it acts like make an actual free end now notice that the actual transmission still continued right along the light one okay the heavier one reflected itself back now it's not as high because some of that energy got passed along from one boundary to the other. All right, so there you have it. I would encourage you to try to simulate these on your own so that you can see it. And then you can also intuitively walk yourself through. And of course, okay, the component of the amplitudes. So these ones indeed will change, okay, when these are in transmission because of the fact that some of it gets reflected back in. But the total energy, as long as the energy is consistent due to the conservation of energy, so that energy should get passed. So the total energy between one and the other, the reflected and the transmitted wave or pulse, okay, should sum up to the total one that it started off with, unless, as usual, there are losses. All right, so thank you for watching, okay, this introductory to free end, fixed end reflections, and then also boundary conditions between light to heavy, or heavy to light. And this was done throughout various strings. All right, we'll see you in a future video. Bye, everybody.